Hi, uh, this is just a quick demonstration of Dark Function Editor. Um, just let you see how you can define your sprite sheets uh, and make animations really quickly. So uh, I'll make a new sprite sheet now. And um, there's two different kinds of sprite sheets. There's uh, a sprite sheet where everything's all on one large image, all your sprites are already on a large image and you just need to define the coordinates. And the other one is where um, you've already got your sprites uh, defined as lots of separate images and you want to combine them into one sprite sheet. Um, but for now I'll I'll do the, the one large image option. Define sprites um, and I'll open phoenix.png which is uh, just a random sprite sheet I found on the internet. So that's quite cool. Um, okay so the first thing you notice is it's got a pink background um, and we'd like to make it transparent obviously um, so we can you know, use it in games or whatever. And it also lets us use an automatic uh, sprite selection feature of the tool. So I'll just make this pink color transparent. Cool. Uh, now that I've done that, all I have to do to select a sprite is to double click on it. And it's going to automatically set the bounds, uh, give you the coordinates, and I'll show you a preview. Uh, but what I'll actually do is I'll create some categories now to organize things a bit better. So I'll make head, body, and wings. And I'll go through and add all the heads to the head category. Done. And the same with the body. And you can see that it's missed some pixels here just because they're not part of the main image, they kind of detach from it. Uh, but it's easy enough to just resize the sprites like that. So you can manually size everything. Uh, but for now I'll just quickly quickly go through and select them all. And the wings as well. Now you can see it's doing it all in a different colour. Just helps to see what's in what category. And you've got if you've got a lot of sprites on the screen it really helps to just organise things. Cool, and that's our sprite sheet arranged. Um, as you can see, we're not using some of the images, and there's a lot of wasted space between images here. So what we can do is we can optimally pack them. So we click on optimally pack sprites. And we can either do it as power of two, which is useful for things like if you're going to use an open shell, it's going to want the texture in a power of two form. Like, you know, uh, it's going to want the width and height to be a power of two, so it'd be 256 by 512, for example. Or you can just pack it down to be the smallest. Uh, I'm going to use power of two just now. And you can see it's rearranged everything, and um, it's got rid of all the extra stuff that we didn't didn't use. Cool. Well, that's our spreadsheet created. Um, I'll save that, and we've modified the image because we made the background color transparent, and we've moved everything around. So uh, it lets us know, and we'll just say, yeah, we'd like to re like to overwrite the image, please. And uh, I'll call it color spreadsheet Phoenix. Dot sprites. Done. Now what that's given us is a our sprite sheet file which is an XML file with all the coordinates and the modified image file. So you can go go ahead and use that in a game engine for example. Uh, just pulling the coordinates out and drawing the correct area of the texture on, in your game. Uh, but what I'll show you now is how to create animations from this. So go to new animation set. Uh, open phoenix.sprites and we can start adding animations. So I'll add one here, and I'll call it flat wings, and start adding stuff. So let's find a head that we want to use. This one's pretty cool. It looks angry. Sorry, my mouse is terrible. There we go. So we've got a head there. Um, Add a body. Let's choose this one. Zoom in a bit to see. No, I'm not quite sure those match up. I'll choose a different head. Let's try this. Okay, so that looks a bit better. 
And let's add a wing. Um, you can see that the wing was behind before. Um, we can change the Z order of everything so that it's just going to pull that into the into the foreground. And not too bad. So I've got everything there. I'll just pull it down to center it on the origin, roughly. And we've got our first image. We'll use that as a base for the for the rest of the animation. And we can just add cells. It's going to automatically uh, duplicate the content. Um, just to save you rearranging everything again. Uh, what we want to do is remove the wing. Uh, you can see we've got an onion skin of the previous wing, and we'll add a new wing. And just do the same again. Oh, set orders slightly off. Remove the wing. I don't know. So we can just demo this now. Uh, have a look and have a preview. And you can see it's quite fast. Uh, quite fast. So we can just slow this down by increasing the cell delay on each one to three frames instead of one. And we've created an animation. If we like, we can just export that as a GIF. So I'll call it a flatwings.gif. Export. And it should just be ready to, to preview. Flatwings.gif. And there you go. That's our animation. Uh, just made out of a you know a spreadsheet uh, I found and it just took a couple of minutes. So it's quite useful. Everything's very fast and very easy to do. Uh, some more advanced features, uh, you can change the angle and stuff, and this is all written into the the XML as well, um, so anything you change here can be read in the in the game engine. Uh, you can flip it, change the angle by 90 degrees, uh, and we can change the number of times it loops. So if you only want it to loop once and then stop, then we can do that as well. Uh, so if you want to if you want to use the XML format, if you want to actually get the animation data, uh, so you can have multiple animations in a set. So we've got a few animations here. Um, you can just save this animation set and it'll save the whole file as uh, an anim file, which like I said, it's just XML. I just need to write a loader to, to use it in whichever whichever language and engine of your choice. Uh, phoenix.anim. Cool. Um, yeah, and that's it. As you can see, it's it saves us quite a lot of space and textures because if I wanted to make this animation the traditional way, just using images, then I would have this image, this image, and this image. And I would use a lot of space already, whereas now, just using uh, these component parts, I can make an infinite number of animations. Well, almost an infinite number of animations, um, just from, you know, just from a few parts. So it's really flexible, and it means you don't have to mess around with coordinates in your uh, in your code or do any special code. It's just all there to use. So uh, yeah, I hope it's uh, useful to you, and thanks for watching the demo. Cheers.